what is good we're back we hit the uh must sell portion of this and now we're gonna hit the must avoid must fade must sell portion of this uh really it's just to get you to click on the title we're just gonna have a civil regular conversation here um we got our guy austin over here you can catch him at austin abbott ff how you doing man good man happy to be on how are you great great yeah just had a fun little conversation about some buys now we're gonna go to the uh we, we wanted to start positive now we're going we're gonna skew negative here um <laughs> I actually kind of struggled with this a little bit, not not because I don't dislike some running backs. I was it was for so for me, it's going to be a little bit more of like pivot off of guys around certain ADPs in certain situations, uh, because that's really for me what this is usually about is. And it also depends on how your build is, of course. Um, so there's always some context there. But um, so I, I got a couple of guys that I'm probably pivoting off of and would rather have some guys around them. But. Um, I let you lead the last one, so I'll, I'll let the guest uh, lead this one as well. Who is uh, who, who's on the top of your must avoid, must sell, uh, you know, hoopla list here? The first guy I have is DeAndre Swift. So let me just say this: the f- very first thing I want to mention, <laughs> it is so much more fun to hype up a player rather than just you know rip on them and just put out negative content. It is so much more enjoyable. To, yeah, but, but the people like the negativity more. So, <laughs> yeah, they, that definitely gets the clicks. You're not, you're not wrong. But yeah. anyway, uh, DeAndre Swift. So the Lions literally said to DeAndre Swift, "You've lost your job um, for whatever reason. Whether it was durability, um, whether it was a lack of total production, internal issues. I'm not certain. I can't necessarily pinpoint this to one specific reason. But the Lions, you know, what what do their actions tell you? They went out. They signed David Montgomery." Three years, eighteen million dollars. Okay, so that's eleven million guaranteed. And for, just to put things into perspective, this is the third most money a free agent running back has gotten over the past five years. Okay, so David Montgomery legitimately got paid for running backs in today's world, right? Um, so that was the Lions blatantly saying, "We want this guy. We got him. This is awful news for Swift." And then on top of it. They hated Swift so much, they literally spent the 12th overall draft pick, a premier pick, a super early 12th overall first round pick on Jameer Gibbs. Okay, so that in itself is definitely concerning, right? DeAndre Swift is still in his rookie contract, now on a second team. And uh, let's pivot to the Eagles a little bit. So Jalen Hurts is there, right? Rashad Penny's there. Mm Mm-hmm. He likely will never hit a high rushing ceiling, like 1,200 plus yards, right? I, I don't see that. Con- I, I would love to be wrong. I don't think I'm going to be, right? Um, those guys like Rashad Penny, Jalen Hurts, they should take a ton of volume, goal line touches, red zone touches, you name it. Uh, receiving upside, that's sort of spread and butter. I think everybody would agree. Um, I think Philly is not an ideal landing spot. I don't think Hurts will be throwing nearly as much as Goff did. Goff checked down a ton uh, but here's one positive thing. The offensive line in Philly, definitely an upgrade, right? I fully I, I fully understand that. Um, Miles Sanders, the lead back in Philly the past two years with Hurts. Again, we, we hit on this in the previous episode. 20 receptions and 26 receptions for 78 yards and 158 yards. These are Miles Sanders receiving numbers over the past two years. Okay, so Miles Sanders has basically done nothing at all through the air with Jalen Hurts over the past two years. Um, I, I just truly feel like the fantasy gods have plus have blessed all of the DeAndre Swift owners, giving them one final sell high window and and take advantage of this golden opportunity. Sell DeAndre Swift high while you can. I think he's a depreciating asset. He's going to be an unrestricted free agent after the season. Running backs on their second contract is always something moderate. You know, it's it's just a concern for me. And he could potentially be on his third team, hypothetically speaking, in, in his fifth season, right? Like, what does that tell you? You know, that's everything you need to know. It's This is a one-year prove-it deal for him, and and I'm worried. Yes. So I I agree uh, in, in the idea of kind of what I was – led this off with of pivoting off of guys, and, and maybe there's a difference between – where guys go in a startup and where a, a league that's established and where his value is, which I, we use ADP to kind of gauge that a little bit um, right. and set parameters. But, you know, if somebody's had Swift for a little while and they're tired of him, um, I, I think I think there would be a, a buy opportunity for me there that I wouldn't be upset about if the price was right. 
But in in a startup where he's going for us, our ADP, uh, we have him at seven four. You know, and Terry McLaurin and Chris Godwin and and uh, or sorry, we have seven eight. Um, so Terry McLaurin, Chris Godwin, Zay Flowers, Marquise Brown, Johan Johan Dotson. Um, you know, Mixon's there. Who I tr- if I need a running back, I trust him way more to get. You know, kind of what we're talking about with the with the buys. You know, I trust him to get. You know bread and butter carries, you know, Deontay Johnson, uh, you know, Geno Smith is above him as a quarterback, you know, so I'm not, t- I haven't touched DeAndre Swift in any of these drafts that we've done in the off season. So to me, that would say, yeah, it's probably a sell uh, for the most part. And if you can get anywhere around that, then I agree a hundred percent that it's a sell uh, on the flip side of it. Like I said, if he was cheap enough, I'd buy him. Um, you know, early indications in camp are they're saying they're moving them all around, doing a lot of passing work with them, which, you know, you touched on a little bit how passing work is going to be his bread and butter. He's an explosive player. Um, you know, if you can get him into space, he's he's he can be very, very efficient. Um, even in the touches that he had for the Lions last year, um, he was really efficient in those when he played. He was he was very solid, um, you know, and, and the frustrating part about owning any eagle um is is the way they deploy their backs and it's just it's frustrating like you know miles got some good run there last year but again like we mentioned in the buys wasn't catching any balls you put kenny uh you put kenny gainwell in there you put boston scott in there now you got rashad penny who who is a good rusher uh all on his own as long as he can stay healthy so you know it's and, and then you have the quarterback of course uh, so it, it's not the most it, it's it seems ideal for the running back but it, uh, week in week out I, I, th- I feel like it's a frustrating start uh, for running backs. But my, I guess what I'm saying is, is you were, you were kind of saying he's on a one year deal, which his contract is over after this year. So I've, if, if he can come out here and, and the Eagles can put him in positions to have splashy, good plays and he can stay healthy, have, have some, you know, be pretty productive on the ground. Obviously maybe he's not absolutely awesome in your fantasy lineup, but he can show that he's still a good player and an asset. I think there's an opportunity for him to go somewhere next year, um, and get and and have a more consistent, better role because I do think he is a pretty solid player. He is. Um, he is I, I, I just I just don't. You know, you, you got another. Like you said, you had another opportunity when they traded him uh, it, around the draft there to 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 sell high. And you know, in our ADP, it seems like his value has held pretty good. So you know, I, I would mostly agree uh, that he would be a sell. But if he's cheap enough, there, there's a there's a little bit in me that says, hey, I'm still buying because I believe in the player. And that he's only tied up for the Eagles for a year, and, and I think if they like him and bring him back, that also tells you something that, hey, we like the way we used him. They really don't have a great third wide receiver option. I mean, obviously Goddard's their third wide receiving option, but they don't really have that. So you've been kind of hearing that they, that he's lined up kind of all over the place, much like Gibbs um, are, you know, and it's camp, and and we hear this all the time, and it almost never comes to fruition that the running back is going to be, you know, in the slot, uh, but. You know, it would appear that maybe the Lions are going to do that with Gibbs a little bit. And the Lions, you know, did a good job with with Swift when healthy. I think they just got tired of him. Availability is your best ability. And he, he yeah. was not available and, and oft injured and, you know, maybe maybe a little soft for knee bite and Dan Campbell. So um, and, you know, there's a few other things I want to mention. Like, sure. I don't necessarily be negative about Swift. He he is a sell for me at the moment. Um, I was infatuated with him as a prospect coming out of Georgia. I was a huge fan, huge advocate for several seasons th- throughout his NFL career. Um, it's just gotten to the point where he's kind of proven me wrong, where he's kind of made me look silly and just never been able to fully put it together. Right. He had that good draft capital second round pick. Um, good talent. I never had a question with the talent. Never, not at all. I love his talent. To tell you the truth, I don't think we've seen his his peak. I, I, I do not think we've seen it. And that's a scary thing because I believe he has a high ceiling. Um, he just, unfortunately, DeAndre Swift has not been able to put it all together. Right. And for reference, like Jalen Hurts had 139 carries for 780, 40 yards and 13 touchdowns uh, <laughs> yeah. two, year, two years ago. Okay. Remember those numbers. Last year, Jalen Hurts 165 carries, 760 rushing yards, 10 touchdowns. This was last year. Now listen to DeAndre Swift's rushing numbers over the past two years. 151 carries, 617 yards, five touchdowns. And then this past year, 99 carries, 542 yards, five touchdowns. So it does worry me that Swift has never hit 620 rushing yards. He's never hit 500 receiving yards. He's never played 15 games in a season or more. The durability is the biggest concern. Um, His career highs are alarmingly low, and 
I'm not sure why I believe there's this unbelievably high ceiling for him when we have just never seen anything remotely close to it. Um, so for those reasons, I say sell him, hit that reroll button, hit the reset mm-hmm. button, do it now. A year from today, if he is not outstanding, I'm afraid that uh, we don't know what his contract, his team, his situation will look like. I'm afraid that his value will definitely be lower a year from today unless he's outstanding. And that's not yeah. a bet that I'm really willing to take. You know. Yeah, fair enough. All right. My guy's been a guy that I think I've been kind of not, not necessarily down on because I'm, I think he's a, a fine player. And I think what we saw from him last year is, is kind of what he is. Um, I'm going Rashad White here. Um, but before okay. I go to before I go to Rashad White, um, I wanted to touch a little bit on JT and, and the situation. Is there is there any sell for JT here? I mean, obviously, you don't want to sell currently because it's a little weird, but of a situation. But is there any anything in you that worries about JT? Absolutely. And I'm the biggest, biggest fan of JT. I'm the biggest fan of him coming out of Wisconsin, three consecutive seasons of 2000 plus rushing yards. And then he just had over 2000 total yards in the NFL with the Colts, you know, uh, two years ago, huge fan of Jonathan Taylor, but I am absolutely, I'd be lying to you if I told you I wasn't worried. And, um, I'm not necessarily sure what exactly is going on or what to believe. I've read so many different reports to tell you the truth, two days ago, I sent out an offer in one of my Dynasty Superflex leagues. I sent JT to another owner. I got turned down. What I asked for in exchange, Brees Hall and Jahan Dotson. <laughs> I I was trying to sell probably as high as possible. Um, in my personal rankings, I have JT uh, two, I believe. I think I had Brees Hall at three. Yeah. And... So, you know, I wanted something decent. And, and then I pivoted. I went, I said, all right, keep Jahan Dawson. Give me a second. And I just didn't even get a response. So I'm like, oh, my God, I probably shouldn't even be selling Jonathan Taylor if I'm going to get low balled at this point. So um, I'm torn, man. I'm I'm uh, I'm absolutely concerned, though. Yeah, we we in our ADP, Brees is 2-5, Jonathan Taylor 2-7. So, so pretty close there and in, in what fair. we've been seeing all off season. So if you could if you could roll JT, you know, you might have to kick in a little something extra. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, you know, I can't get too concerned. You know, there's, there was the, the weird training camp video where it kind of looked like he was maybe a little banged up and a little hurt where he was limping around. But then like, I just feel like if he was really that fucked up, there'd be a whole bunch of videos of him being like, there's other, like he's been at camp apparently like on the sidelines. So like that one little clip of video has been circulating a lot. And I feel like if there was more of that, you would see a whole lot more of it. And I just, I haven't. So you know, it's usually in these situations a little bit more overblown, but it makes you uncomfortable because of how the, the state of running backs have been. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know that I'm panic selling yet. I think he's one of the best one of the best backs in the business. Um, 100%. You know, just unfortunately where we are with running backs, um, you know, he, he probably feels underappreciated. But, you know, he's kind of got to do what what Saquon did and said, this is the situation that we're in and this is what we got to do. Um, you know, Josh Jacobs would have probably been on the buy list for me. He's certainly not on the sell list at all. I think Josh Jacobs is one of the five best running backs in the league, six best running backs in the league. And I think, you know, what we'll see there is probably similar to what they just did with Saquon. Like they kind of laid the blueprint of, Hey, this guy counts a lot for our team. And I know nobody's really done what the giants did for Saquon and basically offered him, you know, gave him a potential to earn two more million. But I, th- I think the Raiders could do a similar thing for Josh Jacobs and get him back on the field. Cause he's much like Saquon for that team an engine. And I think JT could be kind of the same thing with the rookie quarterback. Um, and I, and I, you know, I like Shane Steichen a lot and you know, they, they got a pretty decent offensive line. I think, I think they need JT and they got to figure it out and he just needs to come back and do it. He's in the good ass dude club. Like he, he's an awesome human being. He's super smart. He just changed agents. So I think he'll figure it out and be just fine. So I'm not, I'm not panicking just yet. Um, another guy that we talked about in the buy video and sell video, like I, I've been, I've been a huge I've been caping for for Ramondre all off season, and it just is there a, any bit of a of a inkling of of maybe trying to like flip that maybe say into like let's say you could turn Ramondre into Josh Jacobs. I know there's trouble in paradise with both of those guys. First of all, are you a Ramondre guy, and are you is he is he worrying you to the sell point here at all? <laughs> so, so one of my biggest regrets in life is uh, <laughs> I got a funny story for you. Uh, we were in the fourth round of my dynasty rookies draft several years ago. I had like the 404, 405, and Ramondre was still on the board at like mm. 402, right? And that was normal at the time. 
And I'm like, dude, I love everything about Ramondre. He makes perfect sense. I should trade up to like the 401 because I knew the owner at 402 was going to take him. And, and I just I didn't do it. And then, of course, you know, looking back a few years later, like Ramondre's hit and he just looks like the best ROI ever, right? Um, yeah. Uh, yes, I am a Ramondre guy. Loved him out of Oklahoma. I, I, I'm just a huge fan of his. And, uh, it, dude, he fits the criteria. He, fit, he checked so many boxes. I love his size, his production in college and at the NFL level. Mm-hmm. I'm so happy that Bill Belichick just – let him really take over the backfield last year, right? It was it was refreshing, it was surprising, and it was perfect. Right, and and right, our, you know they just had a little blurb on Sleeper today of like, hey, they're 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 kind of they're limiting his practice reps, and he was like, hey, I don't know why you gotta you gotta ask Bill. I'm not really sure, um, you know. And they've kind of said that, hey, we don't we don't want to use him like a crazy workhorse. And then they've brought in Lenny and they brought in Zeke and, and those guys, I don't think they want to go to camp. So they don't want to sign anywhere right now. They're going to wait until camps near the end and an injury happens or, you know, they, they can sign somewhere like that. But, you know, I've been R- Ramondre was, was right up there with, uh, you know, targets per route run with, with CMC and Eckler last year. Um, just, just incredible 26%. Um, and, and was, just his target share was was right up there with with Saquon Barkley's. The only people that were higher were CMC and Eckler. So I've been a big fan of of Ramondre for this whole offseason. I have him on a decent amount of teams, but I would be lying if I wasn't a little worried. He didn't make the sell list for me, but I wanted to definitely touch on him here. And I've been kind of kicking this around of like, well, maybe if I could pivot from Ramondre to Josh Jacobs, maybe that wouldn't be the worst. Because I do think Josh Jacobs ends up on the field. And and I think I think the Raiders are are like, yeah, I mean, fucking Zamir White, you know, he seems fine uh-huh. and, and Brandon Bolden or whatever. But I think they know that they're in trouble and, and McDaniel or uh, Josh McDaniels might know he's in trouble without a guy like Josh Jacobs and, and could be, you know, out on his ass again relatively soon if he doesn't have the security blanket with with Josh Jacobs and, and who is, again, an engine of that team. So. Uh, maybe, maybe that would be like a slight pivot for me there, but I'll, I'll get back to to my cell and, and Rashad White. Did you have something? I was just the final thing I wanted to say on Ramondre is like I texted my friends a few hours ago earlier today in our group chat. I said, I really hate to be this guy, but I, I think Ramondre is going to likely regress this season. And, you know, I, I love him, but I'm thinking that everything went right last year. Everything. It was the perfect storm. And I'm just everything you touched on, man, them bringing in a new running back feels inevitable. Um, maybe they just nerf his usage, the volume. Yeah. God knows what. Maybe there's an injury. Uh, again, last year was just everything was perfect. And rem- we saw Ramondre's ceiling. We saw how high it was. Right. And he was awesome with it. But um, so I- I'm going to go Rashad White here. Um, and it- it's not because I don't think Rashad White could have a really good season. I, th- I think he and redraft, I'd be willing to take the gamble. Uh, I think I think he could pay off at the ADP. It's more so a little bit of a long term thing. Like, I just don't know where the Bucks are going. Um, th- th- this season could be, you know, a surprise and 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 be, you know, a great story. But most likely, they're probably going to be in the Caleb Williams sweepstakes. And I just, you know, I don't know what that means for your running back position. They didn't really bring anybody else of note in. And initially, I was thinking maybe they would, and that would kind of hurt. But it's like, why would they with in the position that they're in? Like, j- just go with Keyshawn Vaughn and and Chase Edmonds. Uh, down there and and, are you telling me that you don't believe in baker mayfield (laughs) or kyle trask i mean not really um you know this line for for the bucks has been rebuilt a little bit and pff has them at about 14 so you know close to middle of the pack there it's interesting they're moving they're moving tristan wharfs uh from the right side to the left side um and then jensen's back who was the center who got injured at the end of the beginning of last year uh, he's 32 and and he he went with a with a non-surgical approach on the on the knee which he had a terrible knee injury um d- did a bunch of stem cells and immobilization and and seemingly has bounced back but that could be a little weird and if he misses time that that's that's a big problem this line was terrible last year obviously mm-hmm. they got rid of donovan smith um and and Werfs is is a stud but moving him from the right to the left is is a is a weird move but He's an absolute stud, so I think he'll be fine. They drafted Cody Monch, um, who who is an interesting player. Uh, I like I like his ferocity and his toothless nature, um, but you know he's a rookie, so we're not sure what we're gonna get gonna get there. And then their rookie from last year, 
Um, Gadecki, I believe, is his name. He's going to be on the right side. So there's just some unproven guys there, and and they they brought in um, a guy who was a Steeler, and then and then a Charger, um, Filer, and and so this could be a pretty good line, or it could be a disaster. And and I just I feel like the Bucks offensively could be a real big disaster. Um, I, I think Rashad White is 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 a really good receiving back. Um, I'm not sure he's he's the best. I know the again the efficiency bros hate Rashad White, and that's not why I hate Rashad White at all. Um, but and so, so to me, it'd be it'd be kind of more of a of a pivot. Now, I, I do believe that there is a chance that his value goes up a little bit um, because of that. He, I think there is could be some good usage. And even on shit teams, we know that a running back getting good usage uh, can still be very, very useful. And I don't think Rashad White's a terrible player. I think he's a pretty decent player. Um, but again, they weren't very good at running the ball last year. We'll see if this line's better. You don't have Tom Brady, so the checkdowns at the rate that and the you, you were the highest passing team uh, as pa- per attempt last year, uh, you know, and that's not going to happen. You, you know, you're probably going to be a fairly balanced team, and you're you're potentially going to be behind, uh, so you may need to pass. So that that could work in 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 White's favor, but for me, it just it's more of the long term play. Uh, that you know get out ahead of this maybe maybe ship them off um and and the guys around him i just want them a whole lot more like if i could add a little something to rashad white and get miles sanders i would certainly do that Uh, i feel way more comfortable with that or like a joe mixon again those are two guys i feel comfortable with getting the lion shares of the carries mixon just restructured the deal basically for two years to stay with the Bengals. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is, is nice, and th- their offensive line, um, you know, got a little better this offseason. Now we don't know what's going to go on Burrow, but uh, he seems to be fine. But you know, there's guys like Dotson and Hollywood and Deontay Johnson and Zay Flowers and Godwin and McLaurin all around him in our ADP, uh, which we kind of talked about with Swift a little bit there. Calvin Ridley, um, you know, Jordan Love's down there below him. Um, Darren Waller's down there below him in tight end premium. So all those guys I would be willing to move off of and, and I would certainly draft instead of uh, Rashad White. So that's that's more or less kind of what I was uh, shooting for in, in this sell side of things. So this is a tough one for me. Um, I would probably agree with you if you could actually sell him f- for a lot. Um, so I've – and this is in multiple leagues that I'm in. I've noticed GMs are trying to actively sell him and capitalize, take advantage, sell high. And selling high is something I always am a firm believer, uh, full, full-blown supporter of. If you can sell high, never a bad idea, right? If you sure. can do that, you know, it's, fi- it's fine to capitalize. Like you're never going to regret selling high. Um, but the point I'm getting at is they've been trying to sell Rashad White, multiple GMs in different leagues I'm in, for a single first-round pick, and they cannot get it. All of them have been unsuccessful. And for that reason, I personally probably am not looking to pivot off of him just because right. they, they in our leagues, like your your league might be different, right? right. And if you can right. get a first, sure, capitalize. If you want to do that, it's okay. But in our league specifically, the, a lot of the GMs are very stingy with like their 24 firsts and they don't want to, they, they do not want to give that up to get Rashad White. So uh, in my league specifically, like he's yeah. more of a hold. Again, yours might be totally Yeah, no, Yeah, it, it's not a sell to sell, I guess is my point, mm-hmm. was my point on kind of a lot of these guys. I don't think you need to sell to sell any of them, but some guys I might ca- try to pivot off of. So yeah, I think that's a great, that's a great point. It's it's funny, man. His floor does work. And I'm a fan of, of Rashad White. His floor does kind of worry me, right? It, it's really more of, we just haven't seen it yet. And sure, he had a lot of impressive metrics and statistics throughout his rookie campaign but you know this is a big year man this is i'll tell you what it's going to be pretty black and white it's going to be the whole world is probably in or out on rashad white after this upcoming season right. depending on how he does you know i just think we could see so much change in the bucks next year of that course. almost nothing is guaranteed so that that's really kind of what you know what worries me a little bit there um, you're 100 percent correct so um who, who do you got next uh, final guy I wanted to talk about today, my final sell is Devon A. Chain. And I don't, so he's a sell for me, but I don't want to necessarily bash him. I, I want to inform you guys and just talk about his collegiate resume, what his current situation looks like. So we have a guy that's 5'9, 188 pounds, huge red flag for myself personally, right? You know, I've, I've mentioned that I'm big on measurables. Uh, he is the Walmart version of CJ2K. Shout out to Chris Johnson. Back in the day, man, he was so much fun to watch. Um, oh, yeah. 
Devon A. Chain from Texas A&M. He ran a 4.32 40 time, 99th percentile. That is why he is the Walmart version of CJ2K. Just <laughs> unreal speed. Um, he's electric. He's exciting, man. He's a late third round pick. So for all the analytic gurus like myself, uh, that is a day two pick, which is a good thing, right? We want to see day one, day two running backs. That's what we like to see. Um, I know like Damian Pierce didn't get the draft cap. A lot of guys were not happy because he was a day three RB or later. Um, anyway, as a freshman, Devon A. Chain, he was the backup running back to the great future Hall of Famer, Isaiah Spiller. Did you know that? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> um, he uh, anyway, AT ended his freshman season with an Orange Bowl MVP. That's something that was super, super impressive. Uh, the the Orange Bowl MVP award. He he ran for 140 yards, two touchdowns, and I just love that AT ended his his season on a hot note. You know, you'd love to see early production out of players in college and the NFL as well. But to do that at the end of his freshman year, right? That was something that that it caught my eyes. Right. So his sophomore season, the very next year. A-Chain took another leap forward. He had a larger workload. A-Chain had 130 carries, just shy of 1,000 rushing yards. I believe it was 910 rushing yards, nine touchdowns. Um, so this is the type of improvement that we want to see, right? We want to see gradual improvement annually. And uh, his junior year, the very next year, he took another step forward, 196 carries, 1,102 rushing yards, 11 touchdowns, 36 receptions that was a big number and 12.3 percent target share okay so it was re- again it was refreshing to see a chain take the step forward annually and increase his draft cap every single year his college dominator rating was 91st percentile and college target share was 14.7 percent that is 93rd percentile these are marks that are just awesome to see so i know that he's a sell for me uh, again, I didn't want to necessarily rip on him. Right, there, there's a lot of positives to take away about a chain. Um, but these are those were two big metrics in his profile, very strong metrics, his college dominator rating and his college target share. They were awesome. Right now, Devon a chains dynasty ADP. He is 13th overall for uh, rookies. He's essentially a late first, early second. He's the dynasty RB5 just after guys like Kendra Miller, Zach Charbonnet. Um, and I love that he landed in Miami. You got Jeff Wilson Jr., Raheem Mostert, who's like 65 years old, um, and hopefully not Dalvin Cook, right? It's starting to look right. like it's going to be New York. We really hope because if it is Dalvin, uh, man, I am, I am, uh, I would be lying to you if I told you I was not worried about Devon Aching. Um, so I know that I gave y'all like a lot of hype and praise there, but I am very low on Aching. Um, and, and it's, it's really, it's due to his size. So I, I have a really interesting fact. An interesting stat for you. So I was doing research the other day on A-Chain. Um, this doesn't necessarily apply to him, but I, I want you to hear this stat. And I just want to hear your thoughts on it. So a- A-Chain's a day two running back, right? Um, he was a third round pick. So this statistic does not strictly pertain to him, but listen to this. So three running backs have been drafted top 64 that are sub 200 pounds since 2011. Okay. So let me say that one more time. Three running backs drafted in the first two rounds under 200 pounds since 2011. We have Isaiah Peed, LaMichael James, and James Cook. Okay, and this is essentially a Jameer Gibbs tweet, okay? I know we're talking about Devon A. Chain, and I actually like Gibbs, right? I think he's an outlier. I think he's someone who will break this mold, but A. Chain also would fit this. It's just he was drafted even later. So what does that say to you? Uh, The floor is yours. Just I want to hear your thoughts on that. I've gone back and (laughs) forth on A. Chain all rookie season, all, all draft, uh, season. Um, there's days where I, there's teams where that I, that I startups that I draft that I, or and in the mocks as we've been doing three, four mocks at, you know, at least every month, um, slow clock and then some faster ones. Um, there's certain builds where, you know, I, I don't mind putting HA on a chain on the team because of the way my, my build went. Like I, I, I might not be super deep in the running back and I, and I, I want to, I want to take a shot on something that could really hit. Um, and I think a, a chain could potentially really hit, but I, I don't like necessarily relying on it. Um, so I'm, I'm mostly with you. Um, I've been a Kendra guy um, mm-hmm. over, over a chain that got a little less fun with potentially at, you know, Alvin Kamara m- missing less time uh, potentially. 
Um, but I, I like Kendra. I think he's a bit more of a, less of a risk um, and a more complete uh, already package um, that, that goes there. But um, I, I would agree with you. Like if, if, if you didn't have a chain on here, I could, I could be down with, with having him as a sell as well. Um, but you know, some, some people say discount Gibbs and it certainly could be um, the, the Miami situation, you know, I think everybody in the AFC East is kind of on on all the running backs in the AFC East are a little bit on notice right now because that seems to be the visits. Um, so that's definitely part of something that plays into there. But if Dalvin doesn't go there, I, I, you know, I think he's he's got a shot at it. But it seems like he's going to be very – my whole thing was like, I feel like the weeks that he does something, he's not going to be in your lineup. You're going to put him in your lineup the next week and he's not going to do anything because it's just, yeah. it's probably going to be very hit or miss and, and a little bit gadgety. And, and maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe the, the fact that he was a track athlete and that he kept his weight down to be fast, maybe that, maybe, maybe he's, you know, 200 pounds by the start of next season. Um, and, and all that shit's irrelevant of uh, uh, the numbers that you just put up, which is kind of what, you know, some people will, will say. Um, and I think a chain's fine. I, I think, you know, he's quick, he's fast, uh, he's explosive, he catches the ball pretty well. Uh, you saw him going up against those SEC defenses, he'd, he'd get stopped dead in his tracks uh, a lot. So, you know, was a fun guy to evaluate, but I, I think I'm, I'm mostly with you there. Um, and, you know, it's not to say that I would never get back in. Like, I'm okay. Like, I was wrong with Chris Olave last year, but I quickly recognized in week three I went and bought Chris Olave. Um, you know, it's, that, that's kind of, you gotta be a little fluid. So, um, no, I, I mostly agree with you there. Um, I do have, well, well that, that's interesting. I didn't know you were low on Olave. Um, just lower than, just yeah. lower than, you know, consensus. I, I hear you, man. Um, so I do want to mention like one final thing on a chain. So I was digging, doing some research, the best case scenario for Devon a chain it might be Willie Parker. Remember Willie Parker? Oh yeah, sure. For the Steelers, right? So Parker was an undrafted free agent. Okay, so Devon A. Chain, third round pick. Right. I understand that's not necessarily close to one another, but hey, uh, thumbs up to A. Chain having the advantage there. Uh, both guys were five nine. Um, a. Chain's one eighty eight. Parker was one eighty two. But listen to this: Parker was one eighty two at UNC, beefed up thirty pounds to two twelve in the NFL. A chain is reportedly up four pounds to 192. I'm sure that could go up. He could hit 200. Um, Parker seasons two through four. This is 05 to 2007. Three straight seasons of 1400 plus total yards. Um, he had like 273 touches, 368 touches, 354 touches. Um, Willie Parker literally averaged like 331 touches. 1,538 yards, 7.6 touchdowns, 32 receptions, 232 fantasy points. Uh, Parker, for con for um, context, would have ranked RB12, RB10, and RB9 over the past three seasons with those numbers. Um, yeah. A-Chain landed in a perfect situation in Miami. I think Willie Parker outcome is the best case scenario for A-Chain. Yeah, it, it was a very, very good landing spot. Um, just, you know, that I, I trust – there's systems that I want to buy into and that's one of them. And, and they, they do, they did well by scheming a whole lot of speed and they're going to scheme you open. Um, so, you know, that, that was definitely a plus side of things that I don't want to not invest in that Miami offense. Um, because if, if I think if a chain hits and they can use them properly, uh, that, it, that it could be, uh, it could be awesome. But you know, the Willie Parker things, he, he had, a, he had a nice, he had a nice uh, run there. He did. And and do I think Devon A chain will will be a hit for fantasy purpose when when we look back two to three plus years from now? Absolutely not. I, I don't um, I just think you're betting on a massive outlier and this is a numbers game. The probability is very low. Again, best case scenario was Willie Parker being dominant for three straight years. Um, I would just rather put my money somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. All right. Um, well, like I said, I I I got one more sell on the list here. Um a lot of the guys that I might have been more bullish on selling kind of are are like J.K. Dobbins, which I had been kind of high on. I don't know. This thing got kind of weird. So I was I've been I've been he's been kind of a little bit on my like, I don't really know what to do with him list. Now, you know, Kenneth Walker got hurt and he would have been a little bit more of a sell for me. So didn't put him on there. Uh, we talked about Ramondre a little bit, um, you know, talked a little J.T. I don't think he's necessarily a, a sell, but um one of the guys on our ADP that that I hadn't touched at all this offseason, so that to me was like, all right, I can I can kind of put him on this list. 
Uh, Rashad White was one. And then, um, you know, uh, Isaiah Pacheco was was one for me who in our ADP right now is only one pick away from where a chain's going. Um, so he's in the 10th round, 10, four. Um, so for me, um, again, and maybe, maybe you can't get, like you said, with, with white, maybe there's no market for him, um, in certain leagues, but the ADP is still hanging on pretty strong. And there's the guy, the guys around him would be kind of more of what I want to want to pivot to. I just, I feel like the chiefs are just going to be a little bit more of a committee. CEH was actually pretty good to start the season last year. Um, and then he just got banged up. So, you know, I think CEH will be back in the fold. They're liking what they see from Prince. Pacheco has been a little limited. So I feel like it's just going to be a little bit of a, of a clusterfuck there with, with the chiefs. Um, and if I feel like if I can cash out on the value, um, I have no problem with it. What, what I saw from Pacheco last year, I liked, I don't hate it. Um, their offensive line is also a little bit of a question mark. Uh, they lost some pieces and added some pieces. So, uh, we'll kind of see there. Obviously, it's a really solid offense to have a, a part and piece of, which, you know, I'm usually not a proponent of getting rid of Chiefs uh, parts and pieces. But um, it's more so kind of the pivoting uh, around it a little bit. Like if I'm a com- if I'm a competitor and I feel like I got a good team, like I'm fine with throttling down to somebody like and I, and I could I could win this year. Like I would for sure trade isaiah pacheco for james connor like give me james connor it might be a slow start for mm-hmm. for where the the cardinals are starting off without maybe kyler but like again just like with miles sanders and mix it like i feel very confident that he's going to be the guy that gets the, the carries out of that backfield and, and he was very efficient uh and very shouldn't say efficient he scored a decent amount of fantasy points with uh you know him basically being the bell cow in that offense so i i think he would be kind of a pivot if I was kind of in the the winner mode. Uh, James Cook would be somebody who I, you know, I'd rather I'd rather put my chips in on James Cook. Uh, now you're pivoting to another offense that you like, so you're kind of staying in that wheelhouse a little bit. Um, and you know, hopefully this season we'll see what we were hoping to see from James Cook a little from last season. More more work in the passing uh, in the passing game here, um, and and maybe the Bills. I think have acknowledged this off season that, Hey, maybe we do need to be, you know, running the ball just a little bit more in certain situations um, and take Josh Allen out of harm's way by, you know, him not being our RB one. Um, so mixing him and, and um, uh, Damian Harrison, uh, th- those would be guys I'd be pivoting to. I would also be fine if I could throttle down from, from Isaiah Pacheco, maybe get even get a little plus with this. I'd be, I, I like Antonio Gibson a lot. Like, I'd rather have Antonio Gibson. Mm-hmm. I want to see what's going to happen with the oh, enemy yeah. in that screen game. Um, if I could, if I could move down from Pacheco to say like an Antonio Gibson type player, I'd be doing that. So, uh, just, just another guy whose value seemed to stay relatively strong, um, stronger than I would have anticipated. Um, and I would, I would rather pivot off of, uh, then those are a couple other running backs that were somewhere around his some, some wide receivers that are around there are Mingo, Elijah Moore, Mims. Like if you if I could pivot off of any of those guys to get there, Dalton Schultz and tight end premium for sure. Um, Marvin Marvin Mims Jr. is going right around uh, Pacheco, Pacheco's ADP. Is that correct? Marvin Mims is, um, is, is 11, 11, 10 and Pacheco's is 10. 10 wow. two. Okay. Yeah. I w- I would rather Marvin Mims Jr. easily. Right. So that was kind of my point was that there was just a lot of guys around him. And I don't know if you can, you know, like I said, the startup can get a little different because you're in there, you're in the startup, you need a running back at that point, or maybe you're you feel like you need a running back at that point. So you push the button a little earlier. Maybe the value isn't quite there, but something that I would explore kind of pivoting to. And that uh, Tim Patrick news is so unfortunate, but it's, it's you know, the main beneficiary of it is probably going to be Marvin Mims, right? Right. I understand Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy, sure, but, like, they already have roles that are carved out. I feel like Marvin Mims next man up, man. This is – it's big for him. Uh, but back to Pacheco, um, I I think this is a good call by you. I like this. I did pivot from him. I He was essentially the throw-in I had to add one more piece to land Bijan in one of my dynasty leagues. And the GM was like, I just need another running back. And I was like, dude, like, it, like Pacheco, he was like, yes, done. And I was like, okay, like, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I like that you mentioned Daenerys Prince, right? Shout out to Daenerys Prince out of Tulsa. 
He looks pretty good in some of the Twitter clips. That's really the only positive thing I can say about him. <laughs> I, right. I, I I picked him up in one of my leagues just as a flyer. I was like, or I think I got him in both leagues. I was like, you know what? Doesn't hurt. I had the roster space. Um, probably will never do anything. Unfortunately, I would love to be wrong. Uh, but the Chiefs' backfield's pretty gross, man. I mean, you can argue McKinnon might be the guy. It, it's whoever it is. A year from today, we could be having a totally different story. You know. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, one more before we get out of here. What are your What are your thoughts on Madison and what what to do with him? Is that a was that is that a buy sell hold? What do you What are you thinking there? Um, so I, I've I've looked into his numbers. A lot of them are not as appealing as I thought they would be uh, when you really get into some of the metrics. Uh, he, you know, for me, it's more of a sell. He can absolutely help you win, right? If you're in win now. Um, I did see that he just got banged up like the other day in practice. I think he was able to finish practice. That, none of that stuff worries me, right? He's going to be the guy week one. He's got a, he has a perfect position to change the narrative about his career this year. This is the biggest year of his career. Same with like J.K. Dobbins, Cam Akers, so many guys, man. If, if, yeah. if they show up this year and they are dominant, I, I think it's going to be very black and white. I think people are going to be absolutely in on him. If, Ma- if Madison comes out flat and stinks this year, I think the whole world is going to be low on him. They're, ju- they're just going to be like, look, man, he finally had the opportunity to be the guy and he failed miserably. Like we are all out on him. Um, but yeah, this is a big year. Um, I'm, I'm lower on him. I hope he proves me wrong. He's an awesome guy, man. I've watched some interviews. I'm a big fan of him personally. I, I, I just, I, I admire his work ethic. I think he's someone who is beneficial to the Minnesota Vikings franchise I think he's got a great head on his shoulders. Um, I, 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 again, I just I want to see him succeed. He's not necessarily someone where I want to put, you know, I, I don't want to put my money on him though. I, I, w- I would prefer to go honest to God, dude. I prefer to go after a player like Antonio Gibson. I'm, I'm kind of high on Antonio Gibson. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think you can get Gibson maybe a little bit cheaper. You can fact check me on that. Uh, I'm not necessarily sure where their ADPs are. I yeah, think in our ADP Gibson is 11, 12 and, yeah. and Madison is 11, one. So I'm oh, almost around. I'm actually surprised they were that close. I thought, I thought Gibson would be maybe like two to three rounds later, but uh, both again, of them made late season pushes to move up a little bit. Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what though. If um, what, what ADP is that for? Uh, super flex tight end premium for uh redraft or, or dy- okay sorry i just want to confirm um yeah no, no no that that makes sense to me okay okay that that's uh definitely more accurate then uh but but yeah again you're proving my point man i i think i would prefer someone like antonio gibson who you can get later and we've seen top tier fantasy seasons from him and by top tier i mean like fringe late rb1 i shouldn't say top tier he's a fringe late rb1 like rb12 rb13 finishes for for multiple seasons right we've seen that proven production and uh i, I believe he's still got it in a man like i you mentioned eric bien you know now being in washington i kind of think it's wheels up man i'm, I'm in on gibson yeah. i should have probably listed him as a buy man because I, <laughs> i'm in on him and and he gets freed after this year. So if if, mm-hmm. if things fall apart and and the the skins or the uh, commanders get kind of blown up for new ownership and and you know it doesn't go well this year, you know Gibson could land somewhere else. I think Gibson could get pushed into that McKissick role, which he should have always been in because he's a great receiver. It made no sense why you're not using this guy in the receiving game. Um, and then you know I think you have seen some some good runs by him. So he, he he's been a favorite of mine definitely. Definitely like him and, and the pivot to, to some of those guys. Uh, so to happy guy like he's Tristan. retired. So What's happy. that? Oh, <laughs> McK- yeah. So happy yeah. McKissick is retired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, well, let's wrap this up. I appreciate you. Uh, you can find him all, at Austin Abbott. That's two Bs and two Ts, FF. Uh, so at Austin Abbott FF on all your platforms of social medias. Make sure you go check that out. He's got rankings uh, for the top 200 for rookies, uh, all, all that jazz uh, on his on his platforms, on the on the link tree, uh, all that good stuff. So once again, appreciate you, Austin. Uh, anything else you want to add? Thank you for having me, man. It's been fun. I've really enjoyed it. Just thank you. Thank you very much.
You got it, man. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, five star review if you're listening on the podcast. Uh, we got a Patreon. You can get a five dollar holler over there. You can get in some of these ADP drafts that we're talking about. Uh, we're we're kind of moving towards redraft right now, so we'll be doing we'll be going live for uh, some redraft mocks every Monday night. Um, we just dropped uh, our running back top 24 dynasty rankings and our quarterback top 24 dynasty rankings will be dropping the wide receivers and the tight end soon and then all the rest 25 through uh whatever will be on the patreon side as well as uh then the actual rankings uh towards the end of the off season getting into the regular season so we appreciate you guys we'll catch you next time peace